<laughs> okay, um, let's get started with the next lecture. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, single cell RNA seq. So this is a very new topic, and we are learning new things every year. There are new methods, and so um, I'm learning with you guys, which is kind of exciting. Um, so why do we care about single cell uh, RNA seq? Depends on the experiment. Sometimes you might be dealing with a heterogeneous cell population. For example, if you look at within the blood uh, PBMC, there are different immune cells in there. And if you profile just the bulk of uh, RNA expression, you will miss the differences in the different cells. And then sometimes you might have a developmental tissue and there are different, you can see there are different layers of cells and uh, they carry out different functions, so you may not really see that. Um, yeah, so this is the e example, you know, in the blood, there's a different type of cells, and in the uh, intestine, there's also kind of a, a differentiation layer. So for example, the cells in here, uh, towards the bottom, they are more embryonic, well not, they are more um, stem cells, like they can regenerate, and then the older cells are being pushed and eventually will be shed into the small intestine. And so you kind of want to see that. And sometimes there are also cells that in the tissue might be undergoing uh, state transition with uh, stimulation, such as in this case, a bacteria infection and, and so on. And so um, if you look at in these situations, for, for example, supposedly we have only three genes that are expressed in these different cells. If you measure all of the cells in bulk, what you will see is that in this case, actually all the three genes are expressed at the similar levels. And if you were to look at uh, whether, you know, in multiple samples, you might see actually they are all positively correlated with each other. But if you are able to measure the gene expression within each cell, you might notice for in this case, the green gene can be expressed with the blue genes in some cells and co-expressed with the red genes in other cells, but the red and blue genes never are expressed in the same cell. You can see here, they are actually negatively correlated if you look at their expression patterns within each single cell. But if you were to do bulk analysis over many samples, you would not know that this is the case and consider them to be all positively correlated. And so single cell RNA-seq offers a lot of new insights. And so in terms of the single cell profiling technologies, in the early days, uh, people use SmartSeq. It's still being used. So um, it's, uh, uh, you can also use it for bulk tissue. Basically, um, in, in SmartSeq, you have to really titrate down the, 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 the initial cell population into a single cell, uh, in, in say one cell in the well, one cell in the well, and then in that well, you can do the reaction. And so if you have small amount of material, SmartC can also be used. So basically when people are developing the technique, initially they were just asking, if we don't have enough tissues, can we still amplify the RNA enough to analyze the expression? And as they go more and more towards the low end, eventually they realize you can do this on single cell. And so the idea is if you have the RNA transcript from say even a single cell, they can align, they, they first use poly A uh, tail of this transcript. So you, if you have an oligo DT primer, you can make cDNA so to reach the end of this transcript. And then uh, it, it seems like in the beginning of the five prime end, there's always this G. So they use, they use this uh, GGG as kind of a template switching. So basically then you can have the cDNA, which is full length. And then um, there is one enzyme which is really being used a lot now, it's transposes. And so this transposes can just, anytime you see double-stranded DNA, it will randomly go into different places and insert a little piece of DNA sequence. It cuts and insert that sequence in there. Uh, and uh, the, the, the sequence you insert is actually already related to sequencing primer. And so then whatever is inserted, if it's a red, it's inserted on, on you know, like one it, blue and the other is red, you can amplify anything in between. And so basically random pieces of this, the cDNA will get amplified. 
Uh, and then you can sequence this fragment from both ends using paradigm sequencing. And so um, this approach you can use to amplify any small amount of RNA and uh, uh, it, it can basically cover the whole transcript. Um, some reads will cover in the middle, some of the, transcript, some of the reads will cover the beginning or some will be the end. The assay is quite expensive because you have to make a RNA sequencing library on every single cell. And, and so usually an experiment that has hundreds of cells will already be a pretty big experiment. Basically you have to make library on every single cell and sequence that library. Um, in terms of gene detection, it's slightly better. It can probably detect 6,000 to 8,000 genes. Uh, but usually there is no need to use UMI. We'll talk about UMI uh, later uh, in the next slide. Um, what became really more popular is this droplet-based technology. And so for this, you can use a profile thousands or tens of thousands of cells per experiment. And now there is also a commercial solution available from 10x Genomics. Um, so the idea is, so the company sell you these little uh, beads or reagent. And so um, there is a microfluidic device where uh, the single cells you can see are being, you know, the, so basically if you have a complex tissue, you need to use some enzymatic digestion to make them into single cells. If you're dealing with blood, it's easier because it's already single cell floating. But say if you get a piece of tumor, you need to do the trypsin digestion to make it into single cell. And then you load the single cell into the machine. They go in one at a time. And then in this microfluidic device, there is also, you can see uh, this little pouch of reagent, which is, uh, you, you buy the reagent from the company as well. And then there's each droplet going in uh, at a time. And if it happens that one cell and this reagent go in to the same droplets, you can see here, this particular droplet will be able to make into a good single cell RNA sequencing, a little library within the cell. Um, you can see here, there are many, many droplets that are empty. There are also droplets that only have the reagent, but not the cell. There are also droplets which only have the cell, but not the reagent. Those will not really be able to make into a productive RNA sequencing library. Occasionally, you will have one droplet that have two cells, those are also kind of tricky, right? So you can see here within this droplet of oil, there's one cell and there's this uh, microparticle. And the microparticle on the end are all attached to a little barcode. And uh, later on, all the transcript from this cell will be labeled with this barcode. Um, then if you, at the end, sequence out all the RNA. So, so basically the cDNA, uh, uh, synthesis and amplification happen at the single cell level. And so each of the transcript uh, <coughs> or cDNA will be labeled by the cell barcode. At the end, when you sequence out your final RNA product, all the cells, that, uh, sorry, all the RNA that share the same cell barcode, you know that they initially came from the same droplet and they should be analyzed with it together. And so <coughs> after you have the RNA hybridization, um, yeah, actually the, yeah, the transcription, uh, I see, I think the, the barcode is only aligned to the beginning of the cDNA. And then um, you, so in this process, actually there is a three prime bias because they, the, you can see the barcode is attached to the three prime end of the transcript. Therefore, you can only sequence the end. Anything before that, they don't really even try to capture because they don't know where, which cell is coming from. Only the end of that transcript is attached to this barcode that it, uh, you can sequence out. Uh, so it has a three prime bias. Um, and then after that, you can amplify, you can make sequencing library and you can sequence them out. And so um, <clears throat> early days, people do a lot more smart seq based. Um, you need fresh tissue or at least you need to make the cell into single cell. So for example, if you get a tumor, but if you want to store that for later processing, you first need to make that into a single cell suspension. Then you can store that. <clears throat> um, and then it's 
process at one cell at a time. It's very low throughput, but then you get the full length RNA transcript. It has lower dropout, meaning that for, for each cell, you can detect a higher number of transcript. Potentially, you can detect the expression of a, maybe six to 8,000 genes. Um, <clears throat> and so the per cell transcription level estimate can be more accurate. If you really want to know in this one cell how much genes are expressed, well, I, I would be cautious even to do that. I think even uh, reading out the expression from any single cell, like a really single cell, is going to be very, very tricky. I will, well, I'll show you um, because of the, the noise. Whereas with droplet-based, you also need fresh tissues. Or if it's frozen uh, before you freeze it, you have to generate this single cell suspension. Um, but then all the cells go through this droplet machine, and in a few hours, uh, it will come out in this little droplet, and the RNA will be labeled, and you can um, you can go through the experiment. There's now commercial solution. Uh, each cell has this barcode, so all the transcript from that cell will have the same barcode. In addition, in the process, you can see within the actually with every single cell experiment, you have to amplify that RNA a lot in order to be able to sequence it later. And so in order to make sure there is no bias during the PCR amplification, basically you do not want to have initial cDNA alignment and just a single transcript that get PCR amplified over and over again and overwhelm your other uh, transcript. In the droplet-based approach, they also create a unique a molecular identifier, which is kind of just some random sequence in there, so that later on, if you indeed sequence out one um, RNA seq uh, read, if they if they have the same UMI, you you will just think that it's coming from PCR amplification bias. But if um, it's the same RNA but different UMI, you will think okay, it's it, it initially is coming from a different piece of RNA that you are reading more abundant transcript from this gene. Um, the early droplet-based approach all have three prime bias. Recently, 10X Genomics released a new reagent which allow you to tag the transcript just on the five prime end. And so in those, you will have a five prime bias, the transcript. So you either are biased on the three prime or biased on the uh, five prime, because that's how they can add those barcodes and the UMIs to the end of the transcript. And once you kind of, uh, they, they also use, I think, transposes. And the middle part, because they are not labeled, they are not being able to capture and sequence later. And even if you sequence it, you wouldn't know which cell it's coming from. So they don't try to capture that. Um, so the... The droplet has a very high dropout. You can see here, uh, you know, for the cells that have uh, these, usually you have to load the cell, uh, load the machine with tens of thousands of cells or even uh, like 20, 30,000 cells. And at the end, hopefully you will get maybe eight, 80,000, or sorry, 8,000 cells from the experiment. Usually the maximum number you can load on a 10X machine is 10,000. Or if you can get 10,000 cells, that's really good. Usually if you load even 20,000 cells, maybe you will be able to get readout for 8,000 or 7,000, okay? So it, the, you can see that a lot of these droplets or cells are wasted. Um, and also per transcript or per gene, the number of genes per cell you detect is much, much lower. Usually, depending on how deep you sequence, each cell you only get about maybe 2,000 genes or even 1,000 genes. And so the, the readout from a single cell is not very accurate. But what you can do later on is uh, we can cluster the different single cells and at the end, you can, you can kind of combine the, the data from all the single cell from one cell type or one cluster, and the per cluster transcription level estimate is much more accurate. Um, we'll tell you how to do the clustering later. Okay, yes, questions? Uh, yeah, the question is uh, whether the 7,000 limit, it's, yeah, the, actually the reagent the bead is is quite expensive, and usually uh, they 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 the upper limit they usually say is about ten thousand, and then also considering some dropouts at the end, you probably only end up having of less than ten thousand single cell. Uh, it's I think the the bead are actually quite expensive. 
Um, and uh, each time you buy the, they, I think they only have X number of bead with different of those cell barcodes available. Uh, there might be third parties making those bead if 10X become more and more popular. You know, initially when Illumina was uh, doing sequencing, all the reagents are coming from Illumina. It's like a pick, pick uh, the cucumber. Uh, the, the coffee, they, they sell you mostly on the ridge and the machine attacks, machine is really cute about this size and it's like $50,000. It doesn't sound too expensive, but the region is very expensive. Maybe there will be third parties that can do this. And also when you book the machine uh, to do this microfluidic, it takes time. And so you can't be booking this machine for the whole day to load your 50,000 cells, right? So usually they book you half a day for, for, for this. Um, in the very early days, in order to do enough sorting, they, they have to sort for like three days. And now with this machine, you can sort in a few hours, which is already really, I mean, it's not sorting, it's like a microfluidic droplet, droplet. Um, it's already much, much better. You can do this in a few hours, okay? Um, there are other uh, single cell techniques. Um, so uh, this, but these are not as commercially available. I think the most popular commercially available platform is the droplet base from 10X Genomics because they sell you not only the reagent, they sell you a machine. SmartSeq, you, you buy the reagent, you have to do the experiment yourself. And uh, uh, the, this other two technique is mostly developed in the lab. They are also kind of promising. And uh, we're hoping there will be a commercial solutions ready, the more labs can adapt it. Um, this, uh, single cell combination, combinatorial indexing approach or SCI RNA-seq. The idea is um, in the cDNA synthesis process, they don't finish the whole thing. So every time, so initially you have the cell, you divide them up into say a 96 well plate. And so each well will have many hundreds or tens of, or hundreds of cells. And then um, in the synthesis process, it will add a little bit, of, like a, in the cDNA process, it will add a little bit of a barcode, only a very short one. And then you pull all the cells together and then you split them again into another like 96 well plate. And in there, you, you continue the cDNA process a little bit and then add a little barcode to the, to the end as well. Um, and then you pull them again and you split and you pull and you split. And so at the end, only if the transcript are coming from the same cell would they have the same you know barcode a and b and c and d and f combination as the same because if there are different cells they might be in the same well in round seven but it will not be in the same well in round 10 right then they, they will always the combination of those barcodes at the end will be quite different and so you add say uh, four base in the first round, four base in the second round, four base in the third round, and four base in the, you know, like every round you add a few bases of that barcode. And only if they are coming from the same cell, you will see the same order of that barcode, then you will know that they're, they're, they're coming from um, the same cell. Um, this you can do as high as recently, there's a paper, they did 15 million cells in one experiment which is kind of mind boggling, but you know, of course they have to also sequence quite deeply, but per cell, the reagent cost is lower. The data quality, I think right now there are only few labs that can do this experiment. Another type is micro well. This one, there are some companies that sell these micro wells. So you can imagine if you have a tube of single cell, cell suspension already, so they are already in single cell, but uh, um, you pour this into the, the, the it basically is a, a, a surface, and they have tiny holes, and that tiny hole will only fit one cell in there. And, uh, and you can see here, you pour this over, hopefully they will all find a little space, you kind of shake them around. And then um, they add the reagent onto the top of the well, and then the, the, re the reaction will happen um, together in that well with the reagent. And then at the end, you still kind of collect all the RNA to, to do sequencing. And then each of this bead going in will also carry a different barcode. But then you, you don't need a machine to do the microfluidics, so that saves some cost as well. Uh, so these are technologies that continue to be developed and uh, we can just continue to follow this. Questions? <laughs> 